Hello and God bless you. I expect that when you hear the word of God today that it will meet you where you're at. If you need courage, it will strengthen you. If you need comfort, it will come to you by the Holy Spirit. Whatever you need, the word of God will provide for you. The spirit of God will begin to uh, uh, touch your spirit, will begin to encourage you and uh, lift you up. Because that's what God does. When we humble ourselves before him, he exalt us, exalts us. He lifts us up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, this morning we're going to be in Romans chapter 5, uh, beginning in verses 1. In verse 1, we're going to read uh, verses 1 through 5. So let me find Romans 5 real quick. Do you have your Bibles? First of all, if you don't have your Bibles, hit pause, go get your Bible, come back, because you need to work You need to work your Bible muscles, right? You need to get in there. Now, I know many of us have uh, cell phones, and we can do that too, and that's okay. I like to touch the paper. I like to get into paper. All right, so I'll be reading out New King James. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this is no different. This is exactly how Abraham uh, received uh, justification, was made righteous, was by faith. In other words, he believed what the word of God told him. He believed what God said to him, and God justified him by his confession that he believed God's word. Same thing with us. When we believe God's word, we are justified by our faith. That's how we do it. And so when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord, God justifies you because you are confessing his word and you're believing his word. So we look at this and, and verse 2. Through him we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. Rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only, but we also glory in tribulation. Now listen, remember I talked about this, this glory and hope and glory and tribulation, that word glory is different. They're not the same words. And so the second word that we're saying, we're talking about, is really, let me rephrase it, we boast in God during tribulations. How do you boast in God? How do you uh, uh, boast about God? Well, the same thing David did when he met Goliath. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that comes against the people of God? He, and he began to tell uh, the enemy, he began to boast on what God is going to do to him. And that's what we do is we get in the word of God and we begin to brag about what God is going to do through us during a time of tribulation. And there's victory in that. So when we say we glory in tribulation, what we're really saying is we're bragging on what God is doing and is going to do in our life through this tribulation. Amen. And so we look at this and it says, uh, and we and we hope in the glory of God, not only that, but we also glory, verse three, glory in tribulations, <clears throat> knowing that tribulation produces perseverance or patience and perseverance, character and character, hope. Now, listen, that's what we're going to look at is we're looking at hope today. Now, hope does not disappoint. Now, we need to understand that when you hope in God, God will not allow you to be disappointed in what you're hoping in. Now, you got to hope in God, obviously. Uh, there's hopes of this world that will disappoint us left and right. But when we look at the Word of God and the promises of God and what God has told us by His Scriptures then we can hope or expect these scriptures to come to pass in our life. In other words, we can hope in God because God's hope will not disappoint. Why? And it goes on to tell us why. Because hope, because our hope is grounded in the love of God. In other words, our true hope really isn't that God's going to give us what he says he's going to give. Our true hope is in that God loves us, that what he promises he will bring to pass not only because he loves us. In other words, our hope is in our faith in that God loves us. Amen. It says right there, hope does not disappoint because of the love of God. Amen. Amen. Listen, what is hope? Hope is an earnest expectation that what God is saying is the truth. He's not going to lie to us. And so when we look at this and we know that God loves us and God will not lie to us and we get into his word, then we know that we have that which we believe in. We have that which we have confessed because we're hoping in that which is true. Amen. So what are some things that we hope in? Get just for some examples. 
Well, uh, if every single one of us that, ha that are now called the children of God have hoped that, when, that we would be saved, hoped in our salvation. Let's grab your Bibles. Let's look at Romans 10, 13. It's not too far away. Romans 10, 13. Hang on. I know it's a little slower when you actually get in the Bible itself. So Romans 10, 13. There it is. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when we, our expectation is that when we call on God, that we, when we tell him that we're a sinner, that then he saves us, then we can hope and expect that salvation has come to us, that we are no longer that sinner, but we have been saved by grace. We are now walking in the salvation of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us on the cross. And our hope is in that God loves us, that when we ask him to save us out of his love, salvation comes. And remember, this hope, you will never be disappointed when you ask God to save you. When you call on the name of the Lord to save you, he will always save you when you call on him, according to the word of truth. Amen? And so we look at that and we, we, we expect that, that we get saved. Now, what would you think about someone that you prayed the prayer of salvation with, and then the next day they come back to you and they say, can you pray the prayer of salvation with me? And you go, well, wait a minute, we did that yesterday. Yeah, but I want to make sure that I'm saved, so we're going to do it again today. Well, you are saved because your hope was in the word and the truth of God. You don't have to doubt it, and he did not disappoint you. You were saved. Amen? And so we're saved. What's another hope? Well, let's go to Romans 6.4. I know I'm in Romans a lot today. Let's go to Romans 6.4. Now, this is good. <laughs> well, all the word is good. This is good. Therefore, we were bat we were buried. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism in death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and when you get baptized in water, you're publicly professing what God has done inside of you privately. You're professing that as Jesus died and was risen, you have also died to your old nature, your old sin nature, and have risen in Christ to the righteousness that God has made us, that we are now a new person, a new creation in Christ Jesus, no longer that old man, that old person, uh, but now the new person. And, and we can believe it and walk in this newness of life. Why? Because our hope, our earnest expectation is that when is that when we accept Jesus Christ and believe that God raised him from the dead, then we not, are saved and are no longer like we used to be. We've been translated out of darkness into his marvelous light. And therefore, we can walk with this newness about us, no longer judged by what we used to be, because now we're judged by being the righteousness of Christ in him. Amen. So I have a hope that I walk in a newness of life, that I'm no longer that old man, that old man has no, no hold on me, but I have this, uh, who has a hold on me is Jesus himself, and I'm walking in this newness of life. Amen. Amen. Now, how many of you have prayed for healing and, and uh, expect healing? How many of you know that healing is a promise in the Word of God? In fact, I've done uh, uh, extensive research on this, and almost every time, in fact, I'll say it every time, and then you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Every time salvation is mentioned within, a, if not immediately, uh, soon after it talks about healing. Salvation and healing go hand in hand. So let's look at this. How many of us are expecting to be healed and walk in healing? How many of us expect not to get sick with this virus that's going around? Well, let's look at, uh, um, let's look at um, James 5. That's it. James 5. Amen. And hey, stick with me. James 5. This is exciting stuff. Find James. Here it is. James 5, verse 14. Are you there? Well, let's start with 13. Is anyone among you suffering? 
Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing song, psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. What did I say earlier? Where there's salvation, there's healing. Praise God. So that's why it's important that we that we have a church. That's why it's important that we come together uh, uh, in person so that people can lay hands on you and you can recover. And this is a promise that's in here. And our expectation in this is that the word of God says that if you if you go to the elders and they pray for you, that by faith in God's love for you, you will be healed. Amen. You will be healed. Listen, these are expectations we can count on. These are, uh, remember what it says in uh, Romans 5.5, 5, hope does not disappoint. Our hope is in God's word. Our hope is in God's love for us because, God, because of the love of God. Therefore, when we pray for salvation, when we pray for uh, newness of life, new creation, when we pray for healing, then we're healed according to the word of God. And what do we got? We got to build our faith, not so much in the faith of healing, but in the faith that God loves us to heal us. Praise God. Same thing with provision. Let's look, let's look at uh, Matthew 6.33. You can probably quote it, but I like to look it up in the Bible. Uh, let's go to Matthew 6.33. I know you already know what it is in your mind. So let's go there. Matthew 6, 33, and, and I tell you, this is talking about uh, provision. It's talking about things that you need in life, things. Uh, let me make sure I'm there. I'm talking 6.33, next page. And here it is. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that they were talking about. Read the whole chapter. It's talking about needing things. He's talking to his disciples. All these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. How many, uh, how many people here are worrying about tomorrow? How many people here, because of the shutdown, uh, that you're not able to go to work and you're, and you're concerned about tomorrow? God says he will provide for you. Remember, Romans 5.5, 5, hope does not disappoint because God loves you. And so, do not worry about tomorrow. Amen? God is going to provide for you. He will not disappoint. Just trust in Him. Trust that He loves you. Amen? And listen, all of these scriptures, and of course, you've got many more. Hopefully, you have a book that you've been writing uh, for promises for your life, for your children's life, for your family, for those you love, for the stranger, uh, for everyone that you can talk to. All of these scriptures are the will of God. If you can find the scripture, it is the will of God. Amen? And what does it say in 1 John 5, 14 and 15? Should we go there? Yes, let's go to 1 John 5, 14 and 15. You know this is almost, I say this in almost every sermon because it's so powerful. 1 John 5, 14 and 15, here it is. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, everything that I that I talked about today and much more is in his word, which is his will. And so when I go into his word and find his will, I can in confidence pray according to the scripture that I found. And if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now listen, that's key. Because anytime you look at the scripture and you hear and you see God hearing the people, that means he's answering them. He's hearing them because it's his will to hear what they have to say. And he hears us. And if we, he hears us, of what we've asked of him, then he gives us the petitions thereof. Or in other words, I, you can say this, he will not disappoint your prayer. He will not disappoint your prayer. Your hope in the scripture, your hope in the promise, your hope in the prayer will not be disappointed. Why? Because of the love of God toward you. Amen? Your hope in God's word will not be disappointed. 
Praise God. Praise God. Remember what 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold, what manner of love is this that God would call us the children of God, that the Father would call us the children of God. What manner of love is this? It's the manner of love that when you get into his word and his will, he will not disappoint you. You can have peace. You can, you can, you can rest in that God is not going to let you down. Amen? Praise God. Listen, as children of God, we are the reflection of Him. He's going to, he's going to meet uh, and answer every prayer that we talk to Him about according to the Word of God. If it's according to His Word, which is His will. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, our Father in Heaven is a good Father. He's a good Father. And we represent that good Father. Praise God. Amen. Listen, this is the day. If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, this is the day. This is the day. Amen. How do we do that? Well, the scripture, listen, we, everything we do is based on this word of truth. And we look at the word of truth and we find it. And in scripture it says, and I talked about Romans 10, 13 earlier, but in Romans 10, 9, let's look at that. Romans 10, 9. Amen. How does one get saved? How does, how does a person go from darkness to light? How does a person go from being a sinner to being a saint or being righteous, being the righteousness of God? How does that happen? It's by this. Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, right now, confess Jesus as Lord. Just say it. By just saying it, it's enough faith for it to bring power of salvation, the gospel, into your life. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Say right now, God, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And the word here says, you will be saved. I tell you, let me tell you, if you've prayed that prayer, God will not disappoint you. You are saved. You don't, I, you don't have to feel saved. Everything, there, there, an epiphany may or may not have happened at this moment. But just by confessing Jesus as Lord and believing in your heart God raised him from the dead, the word of God says that you're saved. And why would God do that? Because he loves you. He loves you. He loves me. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians. I'm going to close with this. 2 Corinthians 13. Second Corinthians, not first. Second Corinthians thirteen fourteen. Here's your benediction. The grace of may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.